Hello everyone, um, welcome to the next series of videos about how to draw what you see. And in the, at the beginning, uh, I would like to, before we go any further, of course, with the more elaborated drawings and other informations, uh, I would like to introduce you to the very different uh, forms of um, shadow applications. Um, uh, and um, here we go. And the first would be uh, uh, the Renaissance uh, artist uh, method, which was actually uh, the Renaissance artists, whatever they were drawing, they always were following actually the form of the, uh, for example, fold of the draper, you were followed, even if they were cross hatching, but they were still, the lines were always curve, 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 curve. And um, vase, whatever, also always the lines were curves in order to. Uh, and give the impression of the viewer that whatever they do, they right away apply the, um, the, the form of the object uh, on the drawing so you can feel better that it is rounded or any other shape it has. So uh, how it can work on the uh, sphere? I will just simply, as I just mentioned in the moment, at the, in, the, in this instant, you know, we're going to use this like how it, the, this kind of shadows might work on uh, for example, sphere. So, for example, we have light coming 45 degrees approximately from this side. So we know right away that approximately this area needs to be covered by the shadows. So uh, the right way to apply the shadows uh, in this kind of Renaissance uh, um, uh, uh, style, um, you know, uh, is by applying starting the stroke from the darker part of the shadow, which means is from here. So we're going to apply the stroke, of course, according to the Renaissance artist, according to the surface of the sphere, which is approximately this one. And again, the other one, the cross hatching will be, for example, from there, also rounded lines, as you can see. Okay, everything goes, it's rounded, it follows the form of the sphere. So if it's like this, it's no problem. Always I start with this, you know, darker part of the on the lay on the on the left. I always follow this form that way around it. Okay? Why? Because look, uh, when I do strokes like this from top down, you see that here is darker, here is lighter naturally. And if I go from down up, I have reverse. Here is darker, here is much more smoother. So that's why I'm I'm doing this kind of you know, gestures. So here the lines become less, uh, uh, less darker and less stronger. So it I kind of like gra uh, naturally will degradate me this area. Okay. So whenever after I do either this and this, you know, I just apply it. If I need darker this part, I just apply it the same way. Always rounded lines. So whatever I do, actually, I apply it everything, all these shadows, any direction I I go. They need to be done like around it, never straight if we're talking about sphere. Okay, so um, in this case, of course, only. Uh, so if I add a little bit the contour of the sphere, I might have quite an interesting pattern of the shadow. And of course, I can use the uh, piece of the paper, any paper or Kleenex or uh, cotton, um, or uh, even the paper stack. And I can disperse these lines much more softer, so my, you know, my, my shadow will be much more nicely, you know, uh, presented. Okay. So of course, once you do this, you can always, you know, make some more lines, you know, if you need it to do something darker, whatever. But always curve, always curve, never straight. Another method which was used by the Baroque artists and later on, 17th, 18th century, uh, was the close hatching uh, where you were actually um, following only four directions, uh, mostly, and the directions were vertical lines, horizontal lines, okay, transversal lines, 45 degree approximately, and another way, 45 degree, and that was the application of shadows at that time, very popular. And Rembrandt was the master of it, um, actually. If you look at his uh, artwork, it's just super perfect applications of this kind of lines. So how it would work in this, uh, 
phase. The direction of the light is the same and the area to cover is the same. So basically I would start as I previously, as I explained it to you, from the darker up, okay? So first I would go with verticals. What you want to start actually, the which direction, verticals, horizontals or whatever, doesn't really matter, you know, as long as you respect, you know, that it's done properly. Okay, and the, and the degradation is really nice, nice done. So I go here, there, 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 and transversals now, transversals. So as you see, I'm applying the transversals line, always from the darker part to the lighter, okay? And the same I do from this side, okay? From darker to the lighter, okay? Okay, like this, okay, here. If I want to extend this, I can extend, but I push less, you see, the line is going to be, vertical line is going to be much more software when they're coming to the white, okay? And the same is going to happen with the horizontal ones, okay? Horizontal ones, gently, 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 and the transversals as well, you know, gently, gently. So I'm going to have like kind of very soft degradation, of course, of this surface. If I need to now make stronger this part where it's darker, of course I do the same pattern. So you always operate for four different directions, okay? Nothing else. And the squares doesn't, doesn't have to be bigger when you approach to the white, not at all, just lighter. But you don't have to really, you know, um, make it bigger or whatever. No, not at all. And the directions might be slightly different. You don't have to really follow perfectly, perfectly, you know, the directions 45 degrees. But anyway, once I, 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 and I force a little bit the contours here, adjust them a little bit and everything, it's going to be, you know, nice. And if I do the same with the paper, of course, I can dis distribute this much more, you know, evenly. And, but I always going to have, you see, this kind of pattern, nice pattern um, uh, in, uh, in my shadows area. So another one, for example, one of the most popular and clo the most closer to realism is almost like photographic way of application is uh, the one which is applied like almost like you would apply by the airbrush. So um, let's choose again sphere, approximately this is our sphere, okay, less or more. And of course the direction of the light is the same, okay, so it means this area needs to be covered. So in such case, of course, you apply differently. You work this shadow in a little bit different way than the others. The others were much more easier because you were applying just lines. Here you have to distribute the, 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 the medium quite, quite like kind of really like a mist, you know, uh, like you would really use airbrush. So you push stronger after lighter, 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 lighter. And the same you do here, you know, lighter, 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 lighter. This kind of shadow takes much more time. And the important, important thing is uh, that you always need to, need to have your pencil sharpened, really sharp, sharp, sharp. The, uh, the need needs to be really pointy because you can patch the holes between, the white holes between the dark spaces much more easier when you have perfectly sharp pencil. So you can actually degrade this perfectly well you know, by patching the, all these irregularities which were, which uh, you left after the first passage. Of course, you can right away do the passage perfectly well if you really take your time and everything, but it doesn't really matter because you always patch them perfectly well after. So it's, it doesn't matter how you start, you can start very kind of like, uh, you know, widely, but after you have to walk, you know, between the spaces to really distribute, to make the distribution perfectly well to the white, almost like melting. You don't, you shouldn't actually see any, you know, um, um, uh, uh, lines or nothing when you approaching to the white. It should be really, really very soft uh, degradation and everything dispersed perfectly well. So uh, mastering this kind of uh, application of shadows, of course, was Dominic Anka. Um, uh, he was really perfect, perfect academic, uh, um, you know, uh, and uh, we'll be talking about drawing. His, all his drawings are perfect. If you look at the ink drawings, you can actually even distinguish sometimes, you know, the lines of the pencil on the medium he was using. So he was really perfectionist and um, 
and uh, uh, artist's work to study and look how he was doing this and really try to achieve the same perfection as he did. So as you see, I am pa I'm actually trying to patch, patch, patch the whole side I made for the per first passage. Of course, you can change directions anywhere you want to go. You just be careful not to make... You, everything needs to be constant, nice, nice degradation, soft, so you feel that it degradates from the really dark, so you can now force even more the dark part here and go much more to the lighter, you know, much more to the lighter, and if you leave some areas really wide, you just have to return and patch them, patch them, so it's uh, really perfectly done, you know, and this, this, this kind of application of shadows takes really a lot of time, and, um, and of course, you perseverance, you have to be, you have to be perseverant, and you have to uh, be patient, uh, then you can get, you know, perfect, uh, this, uh, degradation perfectly done. Of course, it all depends on the paper, of course, and the ma mastery of uh, your medium, how you can master your medium, how you can operate with it. Of course, it takes, in order to finish this fair here, I need a little more time than just a few minutes I have in the, this video. But anyway, it's, it's, I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do, you know, and, 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 and you can be really perfect in this um, if you train yourself appropriately and really take your time. So um, that is the most kind of, of course you can still take, always in any case, you can still take the, the Kleenex or whatever paper and distribute this much more evenly and rework it after the surfaces and everything. Is it, when it's ready, when it's ready, when it, you can't really distinguish anything imperfect in your shadow. That is ready, your shadow is, is really ready to show, okay, to the public. So, uh, there's another way, of course there are other ways, much more artistic, much more, you know, uh, you can actually create your own character, uh, characteristic shadows to you, like some artists do, um, you know, when they drawing, when you do all kind of abstract lines, the only mastery, you have to always master the degradation process, so you can do any kind of lines, but you have to show that you master this form of the application of the shadows by perfect knowing how to degrade this, okay? So as you go closer to the white, doesn't mean that they uh, have to be fewer lines, but softer lines. This is the perfect degradation on this kind is when you have all the same lines, but dark, very dark here, much more dense, and here, you know, slowly, slowly, uh, the same quantity, less or more, and slowly, you know, lighter, lighter, lighter. Another way is just by circles. You can apply all kind of the same kind of circles, the, always the same size, or different kind of circles, you know, whatever, like the, you would see like in the mirror, what are the bulbs, you know, coming up. So the only, the success of this kind of degradations, of course, is always how you can distribute them evenly, so you can feel, the viewer can feel that you, you know, you have ma you mastered the medium, and you can degradate any form you choose perfectly well. So it might be triangles, it might be squares, whatever you can use it. Might be this kind of, you know, forms only, you know, you always only work with this kind of forms. It's, it's, un, it's not finished. You can really create your own particular pattern which you're going to be easily recognized as an artist in your drawing. And of course one of the methods very also successful and popular is uh, pointillism. When you are actually, you actually apply the same direction of the light the shadows by application of points, okay? So we apply by the points like this, you know, and they are more dense when it's darker, and of course you spread them out and don't, uh, don't hit too, too strong the paper when you approach the white. This is perfect uh, shadow to do uh, for many things, uh, and gives you super, uh, you know, perfect control of the surface and everything, the shadow, the surface in the shadows itself, the only thing is that it demands much more time than this one, and um, uh, of course uh, you need to like this technique. Uh, it's technique really which, uh, in which you can show your mastery to the perfection, uh, you know, as you um, uh, apply the shadows. Of course, I don't going to finish this here because it takes <laughs> enormous amount of time and perfection. I am just showing you, you know, the basic forms of application which you can master on yourself 
uh, you know, and take as much time as is necessary, or you need to do it perfectly. So, of course, at the end, each of this method, you can always, you know, disperse a little bit, disperse a little bit, and it's going to be nice, and even this pointillism and everything, method of pointillism with application of the point, it's very good. So, this is just like a few. I, as I said, there's many of them, um, but if you just master one of those perfectly well for your purpose, uh, you don't need to know everything. Sometimes you can mix all of them, you know, and it depends what you're doing, what kind of drawings. So some parts could be used for the background, some parts, some parts from the front. It's up to you. Um, anyway, um, that's it about the shadows, uh, application of different form of shadows. And I'm um, looking uh, to see you again uh, soon uh, in the next videos. Thank you very much.